interjection here, Nation of Warriors, with my first treaty-related video. By treaty, I am referring to No Rush, uh, to be exact, No Rush 40 in this video, i.e. This is a basic video on how I personally would play a no Rush 40, which is obviously where every player in the game agrees to not fight each other for 40 minutes or possibly longer, but seriously, who the fuck would want to do that? I'm kidding. So I will be talking about how I would build my economy, prepare a base, etc, etc. Um, maybe the fighting, I don't know, maybe. Firstly, this is on the Asian dynasties, because unlike on the vanilla, the game actually facilitates no rush. Uh, there is a game mode named Treaty, or, or Treaty No Blockade, which actually prevents you from getting attacked until the allotted time has expired. So if you agree on a 40 minute no rush, um, then you can't fight for 40 minutes. Why people still try to do this on the vanilla where there is not that system in place, I will never know. It really is questionable why people still do that on the vanilla and, and just then just complain that they get attacked before the rush period was over. Um, uh, so before I roll the video, I'd like to state my opinion on treaty. Uh, normally I steer clear of anything remotely treaty related because it bores the fuck out of me. Uh, that is me personally, although I do see the appeal. I used to play nothing but treaty and it was uh, really enjoyable, but that was a while back. So then interjection, why am I listening to you if you don't even play treaty? Well, I do sometimes, I probably do play treaty more than I let on. Uh, and back in the day when I played treaty lots, I had first lieutenant rank. Uh, that was on a different account, which I will not reveal here. At the moment, interjection, it's apparently master sergeant, but that's because I just don't play enough rated treaty games to get ranks. Um, if you wanted an estimate, I'd say around captain. I'm sure ice climber would vouch for that. Um, why have I said all this? Just to add some credibility to the video, really. But having said that, I'm no pro, not one bit. So yeah. Um, bit more of a rush game player or a normal game player now uh, supremacy normal supremacy uh, I'd also like to state that when ESO made the game they did try to balance the civilizations for rush games or I'll gain I'll just say normal games uh, for supremacy and they did achieve reasonable balance but that is entirely a different discussion um, but ESO did not balance the civilizations for treaty because they had no idea anyone would want to play the game by agreeing not to fight each other for a certain amount of time uh, evidence for this is clear by the fact that there is no treaty system in the vanilla and uh, some of the civilizations are just plain overpowered but again that's another discussion for another day so the first thing i'd like to talk about is deck construction uh, in my opinion the most important thing in treaty is building your deck and using it properly so oh, actually right here we're looking at a british deck gonna be using british cards gonna be playing as the british uh, in the actual game now this is due to popular demand several requests from clan mates so you know what thought i'd make a, a guide on British No Rush 40, Treaty 40. Although the ideas uh, around the card selections are interchangeable and can be used for other sieves, so this is by no means a uh, only uh, a British guide, although I suppose it probably would help with British more, um, seeming as it's being built with British. Anyway, moving on to the manufacturing plant, and just before I start selecting cards, gonna explain that I have actually recorded this a few times now, the first time being um, it was just way too long and I decided to do it again and condense it down. The second time I recorded the audio of my webcam and <laughs> the audio was terrible, so I couldn't use it. Here we are again. Now, I'm going to place these three cards here. These are all in the plantation upgrade line. And I'm going to place uh, all the, these two cards here, which are in the mill collecting line. Although refrigeration actually upgrades huntable animals as well, which is good. Um, and also this card here, the Royal Mint in the coin mine collecting line, which also upgrades plantations. Every card I've selected upgrades either mills or plantations. You really can't afford to be sending um, things like the Spice Trade or uh, the Silversmith, which upgrade uh, coin mine or huntable animals, because you really aren't going to benefit from those upgrades, those cards, as much as you would from sending um, mills and plantation cards. Uh, the majority of your resources will be coming from mills and plantations. Huntable animals and coin mines do run out whereas uh, mills and plantations indefinitely last forever until the buildings are destroyed. So I'm also going to be sending the uh, exotic hardwoods, or not, and, and I'll also place the sawmills in my deck. Now I probably won't get around to sending sawmills, it's only a 15% upgrade for wood collecting, uh, because the exotic hardwoods is, is the 20% uh, one, that's definitely, you know, 5% more, that's the card I'd send, and sending them both is a bit of a push, a bit of a stretch, uh, considering the amount of cards we will actually need to send. I'll actually uh, show the card order in the actual game, but here I'm just going to uh, build a deck of 25 cards. Now the reason we're putting wood collecting cards in here is because um, my strategies at least, they involve a lot of building, just military buildings everywhere, placing walls everywhere, so I can change my angle of attack often and quickly and um, it's just a threat to your opponent to have buildings everywhere and I just, there's never enough wood in tree, there really is not, so uh, having these upgrades means you can collect more of that wood 
uh, more than your opponent, so you have more in your own stockpile, and then um, because of that, hopefully there will be more wood available to you, and you won't be so pressed. Because a lot of the upgrades for military upgrades, like the uh, the uh, like the veteran upgrade, the guard upgrade, the imperial upgrade, obviously they will cost wood. It's a pain in the ass. So there you go. Uh, moving on to the cathedral, but before we do so, I'm just going to discuss the distributivism card. Um, it adds a 1.25 trickle uh, wood trickle to your resource, so. Uh, 1.25 wood per second, not a bad card, but I'm not going to put it in as your first card, it's it's not a very good one. Some people say, uh, send distributivism, it's just extra wood you wouldn't normally have, but uh, to be honest, I wouldn't, I'd wouldn't. i send the three settlers if I was going to do something like that, because three settlers, if you think about it, collect way more resources than 1.25 wood. Uh, you can have these three settlers on wood, obviously they're not going to die because it's a treaty. Um, yes, you can train all 99 settlers and you can't train a wood trickle, um, but still, over the entire course of a game, three settlers is going to be a lot better than a wood trickle. Um, it, it's just way more resources, and um, it's going to get you through the ages faster, uh, into age two faster, get all them uh, manners up quicker, and then into age four faster, you can get that estates card and get to age five quicker. There's this big snowball effect into the capital where you can then get the you know the upgrades there quicker. Over the course of the game, you would see a much much bigger resource difference if you sent three settlers, uh, which I sometimes do. Um, if you have a trading post throughout the entire game, then uh, you can consider it, or even if you didn't, you could consider it. Uh, it just depends how many cards you would have by the end of the, the game. You've got to get all the essentials in there. But three settlers can be a nice bonus, although obviously sending that card means then you won't have a card you can send later. Uh, you might be pushed to get all the cards you wanted out if you, had, if you started sending unnecessary cards. Um, anyway, back to the cathedral, which was the what we were going to move into. Uh, these two factories, your best friends. Now, they generate resources, we all know that. Although you can train um, heavy cannons from them. A little bit retarded though, because heavy cannons are... They take way too long to train, and you could essentially just use the resources to make horse cannons, which are more suitable anyway, because they move a lot faster. If you're playing the vanilla, then obviously falconets. Um, but, but yeah, heavy cannons, not a good idea. Now... Obviously, all resources uh, are generated by the factories at the same speed, whereas wood, so wood is actually the slowest gathering resource via settlers. Therefore, it mathematically makes sense to generate only wood from your factories. Um, and and to be fair, that you know, wood is one of the resources which you ca isn't renewable. You can't collect it from mills plantations, as said. So e any extra wood from anywhere is is good. Uh, this so generating wood from your factory is essentially wood you wouldn't have had. The next two cards I'd send is probably the fencing school and the uh, riding school. Now these two are probably, well, very, very important. You, may, you need to make sure you have both of these by the end of the treaty, really, or at least one of them, depending on which unit you're going to train, and then swiftly make sure you get the next uh, one of these two upgrades. Because uh, the, the, the train faster is, is just, some civs can train units instantly if they stack all of their train fasters together. Uh, like the French, they get instant train cavalry, and um, replacing the units instantly uh, replacement time of units is very, very important in treaty. Uh, so the faster you can replace your units, the better. Really, uh, these riding school and uh, the um, and the fencing school definitely very important. Stack them with the church upgrades. Um, another upgrade is this advanced arsenal that has several improvements in there that upgrade your units. Uh, very useful, especially since um, now the well, all, all military upgrades are definitely beneficial. But you don't, by no means, need to send that by the end of the treaty because uh, you want to focus on um, all of the economy cards first. And then, once you start the fighting and your units start killing your opponent's units, you get shitloads of XP coming in anyway. And then you can send uh, military cards. That applies to um, all these upgrades here, which I've just selected, which I ha will have in my deck. No, I haven't actually gone for this improved grenades because, to be fair, it's just useless. Grenadiers are really shit. Um, functionally, I can't see the point of them. Uh, horse cannons do a lot better job of killing infantry and destroying houses and destroying buildings and mortars do a better job of destroying buildings still um, so yeah back to the cathedral uh, I'm also gonna this estates card now this is a unique British card um, now there's there's an argument here which I'll explain uh, in terms of maxing your settlers now the first is the normal way the conventional way of maxing your settlers which is going age one age two age three building two extra town centers and age three with your explorer and then training settlers from those town centers until 
uh, you have all 99 or 80 if it's Coeur de Bois or whatever. Uh, the Estates card, however, is an alternative way of maxing your settlers. You go age 1, age 2, age 3, and age 3 you do not bother training any more town centers. Instead of collecting extra wood, you just keep continuing to collect food and coin obviously off those mills and, sorry, off those uh, huntable animals and coin mines and quickly get to age 4 and then uh, switch all to food or most of the food and then you, then you should g uh, be gathering enough food to be able to train um, settlers from your houses using the estates card. Obviously the estate card allows houses, i.e. manors, to train settlers and uh, you can max your settlers much quicker using that and uh, I'll be using the estates card because it's just fun, British is, is like that. However, there is that argument, uh, estates is actually technically an extra card you do not need to send because of um, the fact that you can train them from town centers but I personally would use it because uh, the boost is is just so huge um, in terms of getting your settlers out quickly. Um, two extra cards I'll be sending is uh, Pioneers and uh, Improved Buildings. By sending I don't actually mean sending, I mean um, I have them in the deck because uh, I wouldn't be sending these before the treaty or even remotely after the treaty. Uh, these are once you've sent everything else, like literally everything else, then you might consider sending Pioneers and um, this Improved Buildings which is 40% upgrade to hit points. And the reason here is I've played a few games before in, you know, in, in the past and uh, we've been the fighting's been going on for a long time and um, for some reason I've decided not to defend my base. He is, my opponent has not defended, decided to defend his base. We're both attacking each other's base. Uh, we basically swap bases. I destroy his, he destroys mine and we go from there. Very interesting kind of game considering resources seem to run out once you very quickly once you haven't got an economy. But anyway, the uh, point of the, the, the pioneers there is your settlers get 65% more hit points. Maybe you can salvage 65% more of your settlers. Obviously, you're not, the maths there is a bit, you know, you're not really going to send 65. It wouldn't really work like that. But you know what I mean? You're going to save some settlers and uh, that can really make the game once you've destroyed your opponent's economy. If you've still got a few left over, i.e. you've salvaged some, um, that's always good. Now, uh, say improved buildings that's also quite cool like, uh, I, I seem to be out of I can I like to build like several layers of walls in treaty I can build up to 10 layers of walls no um, no ship and um, the obviously 40% bonus to hit points is essentially four layers of walls for free and it benefits all your other buildings with hit points obviously not an essential card I want to be sending that after the other cards but, but hey um, nice to have in your deck and also there's this uh, the glorious revolution the the British advanced church now really uh, out of every card I could could send, this is probably the least useful, but I had 24 out of 25 cards, as you can see, or 25 selected here. I've, I've gone through all the others and I cannot find anything else I might want to send, although there probably is something that you could uh, send reasonably send, which would be better. Um, it, it offers, say, uh, there's a few unit shipments there in, the, in forms of researches, which can be quite cool, you can get some interesting um, overpopulation at the very start of the treaty, although I wouldn't recommend sending it before the end of the treaty. Uh, you certainly get these unit shipments, um, fair enough. But there's this upgrade in there that upgrades you, your musketeers by 25% hit points and reduces their speed by 20%. Uh, that's cool, but I really wouldn't send that either. Um, there might be a time you might want to send it if you're thinking, right, well, it's come down to this, I need to send this because, like, my economy's dead. I, I have no idea when what situation might arise, but. Um, personally, I would never send it uh, until that situation did arise because say you're attacking your opponent, you send all your musketeers over, he attacks you, you're like, oh shit, now I have to walk back, you've reduced the speed by 20%, it's going to take you ages to get back, really not worth it in my opinion. So let's move on to the actual game. So just before the game starts, I will mention that the build order I am using, uh, I made this, it is in the description of this video if you want to have a read over it, and my voice is fairly quiet, although definitely audible, just not... Um, as it was in the, the pri previous bits of the video uh, because everybody in my house is starting to go to bed and I just wanted to get this done, didn't want to wait till tomorrow I uh, wanted this online as quickly as possible, so yeah, enjoy Please note that I'm only showing how to manage and build an economy in this video and do just resign at the end of the treaty The video is already long enough, so perhaps we'll save the fighting for another video another day Okay, so interjection, why are you playing against computers? I really wanted to get this video out soon. I wanted to um, actually get the the economy perfect. It's really difficult. I had to, to restart several times because um, my British build order. Normally I make everything up on the spot when I play, but I had to think about this one and write it all down. And uh, I wanted to get it perfect. So the amount of times I restarted to get this was a little bit, um, yeah, a few times. So 
I'm just going to turn the volume down on my computer so I can concentrate because that explorer is annoying me. And um, okay, so what's going on here? I'm, I'm just setting up my EK like I normally would, except um, the computer loads instantly, so you don't have any time at all. And as I, this is an example video, sorry, I dropped my pen. I want to get this, um, I want to show a perfect example. Um, so I'm taking as much time as I want to sort these settlers out. Now, basically I'm telling them to go onto food crates first, then to collect some wood crates, and then to go in the town centre, and then uh, I'm pressing T and, sorry, I'm pressing V and N on the uh, keyboard at the same time whilst I have the town centre selected. V is the shortcut key to create settlers, and N is the eject button from the town centre. So when they go in the town centre, because I told them to when they finish collecting crates, they get ejected out onto the resource I've chosen, which is uh, the obviously the huntable animals. And um, right here I'm building a market, which might seem like a strange choice because obviously they can build manors and get a free settler, but uh, mathematically it is actually better still to get hunting dogs um, that upgrade your collection rate by 0.1 per settler. If you think about it as a 10% uh, upgrade, you get 0.1 extra settlers per settler once you've got the hunting dogs. And a mana uh, it gives you one settler, yes, um, but considering I've got six settlers, seven because one trained, eight, nine... Uh, nine settlers because of all these manors I've built. That's uh, as extra 0 0.9 settlers from the hunting dogs. And obviously each settler I train was also an additional 0 0.1 settler per settler, if that makes sense. So the hunting dogs is mathematically um, better. You can spend a moment working that out if you like. Um, so here I'm going to go straight for as... Um, I'm going to age up as fast as I can. Um, to get to age 2 as fast as I can, that will give me access to that... Uh, the age to um, bow sword. Well, I'm going to get the bow sword, which is 100 food, and that's uh, the wood upgrade in age one. And then in age two, I get an upgrade, obviously, which uh, increases my wood collection by 20%, which is all good. So here, selecting my deck, uh, three settlers. And that is my first card because um, I, I'm, the reason I'm playing with four computers, sorry, three computers to make it a 2v2 is because in 1v1 you can't quite reach the trading post. And uh, in uh, to be fair, most people, especially in my clan, we, we never do 1v1 treaties. It's just ridiculous. I'd, I'd, only, and I, I'd only ever play a treaty in a team game. And um, team game obviously gives me access to that trading post, which I do intend to get. Not getting it straight away. The manners are actually better in terms of long-term... Um, benefits I don't quite need that XP yet but the three settlers since I have that trading route um, is definitely a good idea for me now I'm aging up with 500 food which also might seem odd because you can age up with two settlers um, and the two settlers is obviously settlers which is going to collect resources and over time that's probably going to be better than 500 food but uh, in the short term now yes I am saying short term in a treaty game um, I want to the 500 food means I do not have to collect any food and every settler I have can collect wood and um, this is good because I need to get all my manners up. And I worked out that um, with the steel traps upgrade, which I don't have in age two for a long time, um, the two settlers will get generate 500 food over, I think it was 3.9 minutes rounded up, which is essentially four minutes. Just editing this in afterwards, you can pause the video and take a quick look at the maths. Unless I've done my math terribly wrong, I probably will work this out after the video and cry a little bit. But, uh, hopefully that's right. Uh, four minutes to collect 500 food. Um, I could be, I could have all the manners up. Which I'm not quite sure where I'm going with this. I don't know. In the moment, I, I decided it was better to get 500 food for some reason. Uh, it might actually be better to get the two sellers. I don't know which. I don't really think it matters too much. Since I'm going via the estate in age four. I'm going to get the estates card, which allows me to train a shitload of um, settlers really quickly from there. So uh, the food will. Probably, arguably, get me to age four faster, um, in the because of the short-term bonus. I don't know. So basically, at the market, as soon as I press the age up button, I got the bow sort upgrade. As soon as I hit um, age up, I then went to my market and started clicking the bow sort upgrade, which cost 100 food. And 100 food came through, and then I was able to uh, get that. And now I'm in age two. I'm gonna obviously that 500 foods arrive. Gonna collect that up. I've also um, got that that. Exotic hardwoods. That's not because of age. That's because my second shipment came around, and I'm sending that. And also, um, I've collected 250 coin whilst it was in age one, ready for that um, age two wood upgrade. So I can hit that right off the bat as soon as I hit age colonial age. So we've got those both of them going around right now. Non-stop village production, of course. And now all of my settlers are on um, wood, except that one just collecting from the uh, from the, uh, the food crate there. And that will support my villager production um, whilst all of my settlers are building 
manors. And I'm building, using two settlers to build the manors because uh, I suppose I want the, the sooner the manors built, the earlier you get the settler. And uh, and I think any more one is too few because it, it doesn't build fast enough. Is maybe inefficient. You don't get that settler quick enough. But um, any more than two settlers to build a manor, it's going to get cluttered. As you can see, it's quite cluttered already. Um, to be fair, you want it. I'm, I'm doing everything a little bit spaced out because I'm used to rush games. You can use as much space as you like. And actually, it's a good idea in rush games to space your manors out, especially because uh, further than this, I mean, all around your town, you get line of sight. But in treaty, you're, just, you're really pushed for space on, on the dynasty. So you've got this imaginary circle around your base, a radius in which you cannot build outside of. You can only build very close to your town center in treaty, um, which is a good idea in my opinion. Um, people argue that's why they play uh, Mirage 40 on the vanilla because it doesn't restrict your space, but um, I don't know, I just, it, it does that, I don't, I dislike the fact that you can build very far out on the vanilla. Uh, I, I prefer the system on the dynasties, it makes a lot more sense to me. Now, with this wood, um, obviously all my settlers are now collecting food. Sorry, all collecting wood, building these so I can build these manors as fast as possible, but I'm slowly gonna start transitioning them back onto food and coin. As you can see, I've just started to research the coin upgrade, uh, where that wood, obviously uh, the coin mine upgrade costs wood, and that could be a mana, but um, I know I need the coin to then get the steel traps upgrade, which is uh, going to improve my food collection rate. And if, and I want to start transitioning a few settlers onto coin and wood every every time I build a mana, so that by the time all 20 is built, I don't have to rush 20 settlers onto food and wood in equal quantities or in a, in a ratio that will generate uh, the correct amount of more resources to get me to um, the fortress age is just you can't do it you need to obviously the sooner you, the, the, the later you leave it the probably the better mathematically but it's just impossible to organize this with a bridge there's so much clicking involved because you have so many settlers and obviously each mana spawns a settler so you need to click on the foundation then yeah you can click on the foundation then right click uh, on a, say a tree or a, a food like you can set a spawn point for the settler on the uh, on the that is spawned at the manor by right clicking now I'm using three settlers to build <laughs> there um, two or three is fine, just don't um, clutter them up too much. So as you can see, two two shipments lined up now. I'm um, not going to send anything more. Do not send any more shipments. You send three settlers if you get the access to that trading post. And perhaps, actually, to be fair, I had uh, just editing this in after the video. I wanted to draw attention to the fact that I've just built my 20th mana. So that's all the manas, all the extra 20 settlers coming out at the 6 minute 50 mark. Decent amount of shipments at the very end of the game. I reckon probably could have sent three settlers even if it didn't have a town, uh, even if it didn't have a trading post. Um, but yeah, send those three settlers, then send, I'm sending exotic hardwoods, that helps me get the manners up. And now uh, I've almost got all 20 manners up and I'm transitioning back on to, I think actually I do have all 20 manners up, I'm transitioning back onto food and coin now so that I can start collecting them resources for the uh, Fortress Age. So uh, now that all 20 manas is up, it's a good idea to get that trading post. Um, can get the trading post somewhere whilst you're building the manas, say around 10 or 15 manas, you could build that, that's that's all good. But um, I'm waiting until the end because um, I think theoretically getting to getting the settlers out faster means I can get through the ages faster and then to the Imperial Age faster. And uh, the capital gives you these access to these 50% upgrades um, so you go from having 99 settlers to immediately getting an extra 50 directly, and that's on top of all the other upgrades you get from the uh, from the home city and the market and the, the mills and plantation upgrades. Um, is that is what you're racing for? That is really what makes your economy. The sooner you get them upgrades, the better. That's why uh, the, the the trading post isn't really essential at the moment. Um, there's plenty of time to get XP after the treat. I'll have enough XP coming in to get all the economy upgrades that I need, and uh, the military ones really aren't that important. Um, obviously they're useful, but you do not need them straight away as soon as the treaty ends. Um, you can start getting them after the treaty, providing you have the train fast is all good. You just make your army defend a little bit, fight a little bit, uh, XP comes flooding in. Then obviously you can use that XP to get their military upgrades after the treaty. Um, really not that much of a big deal. So now I'm aging up with the, um, well, I don't know who it is, you get a Carvel and 400 wood. Obviously there's no water here, so I won't actually get my Carvel. But I do get 400 wood, which is useful. I can use that. Um, the other alternatives were like a scout or two scouts or some millet, seven longbowmen or some shit like that that you just won't need. Um, arguably, with some, if if um, you're paying more, if you're more of a pro than me, you can walk around. Say you got the seven longbowmen, you can use them to get treasures or something. But uh, to be fair, if you wanted to do that, you should. You could spawn the Minutemen from your town center and use the Minutemen to collect treasures. Uh, that I probably should have done, but I haven't been on Age of Empires, as um, you guys probably know, uh, for a while. So I'm a little bit out of practice in collecting treasures at the same time as trying to get this build order as perfect as I could was uh, very difficult. 
I didn't want to screw up, so collecting treasures. Um, don't know. You see what I'm saying? Um, now I'm looking at my base right now and thinking, dear God, it, it just needs to be more compact. And the houses could be a lot more compact. There's a lot of space that um, I'm just too rush, used to playing rush. Um, but yeah, so right now uh, I'm trying to order my economy onto uh, food and coins so that I have one thousand. Sorry, sorry, I have two thousand food and one thousand two hundred coin. Uh, the moment I hit the uh, age four, sorry, age three, because then as soon as that, if I've got 2,000 food, 1,200 coin, I can then age up to four straight away. You see, I just cancelled that settler in production there, no need for that, because uh, as soon as I hit age three, I'm going to hit the age four button, select the 1,000 coin and upgrade. There is a four settler and two grenadier or something, or two settlers, or something like that. You get a bunch of settlers, but personally, I don't think that's worth it. Um, this time, probably more of a valid argument than the 500 food one for the last age up, but the 1,000 coin is going to get you to age 5 faster and get the capital upgrades, and uh, the 4 settlers you could have had, well, you're going to age 4 and you get an estate, so you're going to have them really soon anyway, so in the short term, uh, it's best to get these resources because it gets you through the ages faster, uh, and also that 1,000 coin can help me get more shipments via the mercantilism bonus from the church. So right now I'm sending refrigeration, uh, which is the 20% food upgrade for uh, the mills and huntable animals. So that's why I'm sending it because it benefits hunt hunting right now. And I am still hunting and will be hunting. And then it's not a waste because it also affects mills later on in the game. Uh, there was no need for me to send... Um... Uh, so yeah, there's just that was just a pause. There. There'll be a few of them um, throughout the game whilst I was trying to check my build order and uh, do a few things, maybe check my phone or go downstairs and whatever. Anyway, as I was saying, there was no need for me to send, um, like, cards, I don't know, like the plantation cards or the mill cards, because I haven't got any plantations or mills, therefore they're not going to benefit me. Yeah, it's just nice to stack up my shipments, ready for estates, uh, have them all lined up so I can get them factories out very quickly. Um, but right now I'm sending the refrigeration and royal mint because they do benefit uh, hunting and coin mine, and I am still um, hunting and using coin mines, and obviously they're not wasting because I can use those, uh, the, these sh shipments benefit uh, plantations and mills later on in the game as well. Uh, so right now I have um, industrial age in queue, and almost um, almost there, and as soon as I get there I'm going to send these states, and I've got all 20 set, or I'll put all manners on control 9 or something like that, I don't know, and then when the estates arrives I can put, place uh, 20 settlers into into the queue so you can see I've lined up a bunch of settlers in the town center as well now as long as I line these up now before the states arrives they will retain the normal speed at which they can train and um, they won't be affected by the estates card when it arrives obviously though if I place um, a settler in production after the estates arrives even the town center has a slower um, production rate because uh, the estates card slows down the production rate of settlers although it does allow you to your manners to train them which is obviously the great the best thing about it um, but yeah that see I've I've put those settlers in so that I will have 50 settlers overall meaning um, uh, those ones will uh, be generating they'll be training at a faster rate so it's actually more efficient for them to be there before the uh, estates card is placed in so now the estates is here I can put 20 settlers in production and uh, my economy was geared mostly to food to support that, although uh, I, in retrospect I probably should have put more on food because um, it, I'm, what I'm trying to do now is, bat, is get all the... It's, it's, as soon as I have another 2,000 food I'll, I'll, I'll put another batch of settlers in production and then another one after that and that'll be all 99. Actually, it'll be 100 because I found a settler, which uh, if you find settlers and stuff in treaty as treasures, they are the best treasures you can get. Um, definitely get them. And then stuff like in, in deck and you get like, um, X, sorry, not XP, although XP is a useful thing. Um, you do get stuff like increases your population cap by five, and that's that's very good as well. But anyway, I should have had more food because I am trying to balance my resource collection to allow me to get, as soon as all these, the settlers are there, I can get to the age as fast as I can, obviously get them capital upgrades. Now these shipments are coming through, and I am uh, now sending the uh, factories, and obviously I'm going to actually, I did say place, uh, Make them collect wood, but I'm not in the Imperial Age yet, and obviously I'm going to keep telling everybody about those capital upgrades and how amazing they are, so um, I want to get the food in. As I said, in hindsight, I should have collected more food, um, and I'm compensating for that by using these factories. Um, that's uh, seriously everything I do. Uh, normally I make up every treaty strategy, but obviously I said I had to write this one down and get it perfect, which is why there's going to be pauses so I check my build order and do other things. Um, but yeah, see, I'm also getting the... 
Uh, it's, factories, it's nice to get all the upgrades as well. Uh, it's not a waste of resources because, um, although it might slow me down getting to the Imperial Age, it's the, I need the extra fruit to get there anyway. Um, I could be there faster if this, this isn't a perfect build order, but hopefully it'll give a good indication of what's actually going on. Now, I should um, put... I keep saying I need more food to get to Imperial Age, uh, and, and so then we'll interjection. Why are all these settlers on wood? Well, um, they would have to walk a very long way to get food, although I did just notice that food there, and uh, obviously the berries there, which they're now collecting. And I, I noticed the berries next to my town center as well, which I probably could have got and uh, could therefore be in the Imperial Age a bit faster as well if I'd noticed them sooner. Um, but, you know, berry bushes don't usually occur to me as a full source of food because uh, they're just not that great. You know, they're much slower than huntable animals. But um, I'm actually considering the opportunity cost of walking. If I walk over to the huntable animals, say on the plateau, they'll, I'll be wasting loads of um, food collection time. Um, and obviously that's a waste of... Editing this in after the video, just wanted to draw attention to the fact that I've now trained all 99 settlers at the 15 minute and 3 second mark of collection time. Um, could be gathering berry bushes and uh, be actually collecting food, although a slower food, rather than wasting time and not collecting any resources too at all. Um, obviously starting to build those mill, so yeah, that's why they're on the wood, because I'd have to walk off, although I have seen food there, so I've removed some of them. And with this wood, I'm starting to... Uh, start of my mill and plantation industry and um, see if I can get these upgrades going straight away so I'm not actually collecting, no one's actually collecting from that mill yet because it's not fully upgraded, it's not efficient to collect from the mill yet um, so I wanna so I wanna get them um, upgrades before anybody starts collecting from uh, the mills and plantations so right now obviously I've got all of the upgrades I need, uh, my economy is running efficient, as efficient as it can on in terms of, of home city cards sent and uh, future cards now are going to be um, mill and plantation upgrades. They're the only ones remaining, as well as that sawmill upgrade, which will come in handy at some point, because obviously I want to get as much wood as I can. Um, but So yeah, to help me get them, them upgrades, I will send the mercantilism card um, to, to, to get that. Uh, I would I, You might have saw me trying to fiddle around with earlier, seeing if I should get it or not, but then I decided I won't, because uh, it'll actually slow me going to the Imperial Age, and I do keep rambling about how amazing the Imperial Age is, uh, in terms of, of the upgrades from the capital, which is true, and I probably could be there a bit quicker if I'd um, organised my economy a bit better and hadn't had the estate villages move straight onto wood. Uh, but yeah, I'm considering putting a few settlers on these uh, plantations upgrade, uh, plantations and mills, because um, the, the mills are fully upgraded, and uh, in terms of the actual upgrades they can have themselves, uh, home city one is not quite yet. Although actually, no, I think they might be. Yeah, they are. I sent the. Uh, well, either way, um, we'll get there. Here goes the capital, and uh, I've got 4,000 coin now at my base, um, which is nice. That's going to get me the mercantilism, and also 4,000 coin is just more useful because it contributes to your ability to get these spies, which obviously I'm playing against sandbox computers. I should have thought against playing against like hard or expert or something because then they would collect treasures and uh, maybe have, I don't know, it would just be more of a comparison um, then maybe the spies would cost more and you know my economy would look uh, it would, the spies would cost what it would supposed to be cost, I think it only costs like 4,000 coins so my economy's gonna look way better than it should by the end of this um, we'll work out at the end though what my economy should look like considering say spies cost me 25 grand um, but yeah you see these, I'm getting the wood upgrade there first uh, because I want to um, I want to use the deforestation, 50% extra wood, to get all these mills and plantations up. Um, although, to be fair, it would be more efficient to have everyone on wood right now, but uh, that's that's uh, not a prob not too much of a problem, because it means I have to walk around, and obviously I'm, I'm wasting time walking. So, you know, everything's good. Uh, now I'm going to start transitioning settlers back onto the, um, the mills now, because the mill upgrade is almost done, and then I'll start transitioning a few onto coin uh, onto plantations once the plantation upgrade is done, and I'll leave enough on wood to finish the uh, buildings here. So as you can see, I'm 18 minutes in, and uh, it just I'm just almost done. Like, I, I might have to speed up the rest of the video because it really does um, just drag out a bit. Uh, so you see the mercantilism arrived, and I'm sending the coin upgrade, So um, and I'm researching the last one from the actual plantation. So once all these arrive, they'll be fully um, upgraded mills, and sorry, plantations, and I can actually start putting people on them, but no need to right now, although there are um, a few on there and uh, my, my factory should be collecting wood. Now, obviously, as I was saying, the, the spies only cost 4,000 coin for me because sandbox computers are retarded. And, um, yeah, I, I think if this was an actual game, then it might be worth uh, putting the factories on coin 
putting everyone on coin, getting those factories before people have maxed out their settlers, uh, which contributes um, the spies total. I'm, I'm not entirely sure how it's worked out, but uh, the more units your opponents have, the more spies will cost you to buy. So uh, if you can get spies really early on by getting to the Imperial Age as fast as you can, uh, efficiently doing it, efficiently doing everything and then just collecting plantations, then uh, you'll collecting from plantations you'd obviously get all this uh, this this coin which you can then spend yes. on um, the spies immediately obviously we can't get blockade this is treaty no blockade um, which is good in, in the Asian dynasties actually stops you from getting that if that was the rules uh, so now um, I'm gonna start thinking about building walls um, the first layer of wall is just to perimeter around the edge of my base I'm trying to mark out where the edge of my base actually is it gets a bit confusing here because obviously I'm getting into my allies territory um, and obviously I can build within his radius as well uh, but yeah I, I like to get this outline there this outline allows me to um, it knows how much building space I have then and then I can place all subsequent walls um, inside the layer of wall I've just placed and then I know exactly you know where my borders are and everything's good and uh, with deck and you want to build um, there's no point obviously building around these cracks it's a waste of wood and it just clutters everything up uh, but you see here um, I'm going to build in between the plateau and the edge there. Obviously there's darkness though, so I'm just going to place there and we'll deal with anything later. I just want to get this outline as I keep saying. Now I do feel as if the commentary is becoming a little bit dry, so I've decided to speed up the rest of the video by times two speed and um, I'll just commentate over the top or go silent as is appropriate. Yes, Yes, Forster. Come on, Ready, Forster. Now, as not much of a treaty player, I do. Um, I, I don't fully appreciate the need for wood for as much wood as I probably need. Although I did say I do need a lot of wood. Uh, maybe it's because I don't play treaty as often. I don't realise I should do this, but I do not need this much people collecting from food and coin. So likely, I probably should have sent them out into the uh, plateau to collect the wood there, since. Um, there's no way that the settlers can die and I, I just need to collect as much wood as I can. Um, in a real game it would stop my opponents from having uh, as much wood and as you'll see later on in the video I do have a deficit of wood and coin and just way too much food at one point, although that does even out before the end of the tree. Um, continuing to just place these walls, as I said I can place up to like 10 layers of wall if I do everything. Uh, if this base was a lot more compact obviously these the manors I built were just way too um, spaced out everywhere. and. If I built the base a little bit better, I could probably get more walls in, but I like to get as many walls in as I can. Um, it's odd because some people like to build, like, uh, they like have this outer barracks or stables to defend with. Uh, I don't know, I never do that. I always, like, build barracks everywhere across the map once the treaty has begun, uh, or just outside my base. Um, I'm quite good at, you know, getting them up quickly by using, say, like, a bunch of settlers on, on a control group, where I just flip around the map real quick and just mass buildings out of nowhere. Quite good at doing that kind of thing. Anyway, uh, I deleted a mill, um, and I'm going to rebuild the mill somewhere in my somewhere else in my base because um, <laughs> I just need more space for walls. Uh, same with this plantation. Now, I really would recommend just deleting things if they're in bad places. Like this stage in the game, resources mean a lot less than they did back. Um, say 400 wood or 800 wood for the plantation or mill means a lot, uh, le a lot less than it used to. Um, in a rush game, would never dream of deleting a building. Um, it's just, uh, you know, waste of resources, but in treaty, you can afford, it's probably better to have a good positioning on your walls. Now, as you can see here, I'm starting to get upgrades. Um, I'm sending the fencing school, which is probably a, not the best idea I ever had. I should have sent the sawmills a lot earlier. Uh, that means the wood collection would be faster, and obviously I should have more people collecting wood right now, because, um, as I say, wood deficits and stuff. Uh, building that arsenal, and, um, to get them upgrades, um, I'll probably do that in a moment. And obviously gating up where appropriate, and uh, using many settlers to build these walls. Uh, never more than one to build one layer, uh, but make sure it does go up because the worst thing you can do is is uh, placing all the wall foundations and not actually building them because you use too few settlers or they all got cluttered. So you've got to keep on top of these walls and these idols. Um, I could probably have a few more resources if perfect because I have so many idle settlers. And I'm not very efficient when I build the walls, but as I say, I do build many walls, which is, you know, I like to have a decent amount of walls. Ready. 
Um, in terms of military buildings though, inside my base, perhaps I should really think about this a bit more because there's no space to build any. Um, that's a few comments I've had from my clan mates who play Treaty a bit more, that's what they say I should do to get better, and to be honest I agree with them, probably should, but in this video I haven't, wasn't thinking. it was more about the economy this. Um, to be fair I'm not going to fight sandbox computers am I, uh, it was just to show you the economy. Um, if this gets a uh, good reception then maybe I will start doing treaty videos. Uh, it's not I don't dis I don't dislike treaty, I just prefer rush. So you can see from the barracks starting to get these upgrades um, and the wood is going to start depleting once we get to the Imperial upgrades which costs 1,500 wood a pop. And um, the market upgrades, you know, why not get them? As I say, the commentary is a little bit dry now that there's really not a lot to talk about. See, spies here cost me like, what, 4.4 grand? It was really not that much at all. Um, so, I don't know, subtract an extra, what, 25 grand so that, say, spies cost about 30,000 coin. I don't know, maybe something like that. No idea what it actually does cost um, for a 2v2 or a proper 2v2. So, yeah, at the end of the tree, you could probably work out what my uh, resource pile would be looking like by subtracting whatever you think spies would have cost in addition to the 4,400 actually paid for it. Don't want you to, I don't want people to go away thinking <laughs> that, I don't know, it just doesn't seem right to not pay the full amount and not account for it. So here's my attempt of trying to place outer buildings uh, so that I might be able to defend myself. Even though I have no intention of attacking, I do want to build a base to show I would do. And now that um, I've sent all the economic cards, it really have nothing left to do but send the train fasters. And as I say, I haven't really gotten around to sending the military ones yet, uh, due to the lack of XP. But obviously once the fighting starts, as I keep saying, I will have tons of XP coming in and I will be able to get that, uh, those upgrades. As I say, the commentary is going to be a little bit dry because um, I was pretty much done 20 minutes in, aside from a few upgrades. Yeah, right now, um, I suppose rearranging the economy to get uh, much more wood. Probably should have um, decided to get more wood uh, earlier. Obviously against uh, actual players, they would also be doing the same thing, collecting more wood. There wouldn't nearly be as much wood on the uh, plateau or anywhere else on the map at all. So really I should have made full use of uh, that availability of the wood early on and if this were a real game then that would all run out pretty quick and then I'd send all my settlers back to uh, food and uh, onto the food mills and plantations far sooner than, um, than I actually do in this game, in this example. I suppose it's not the best example actually. Oh well. I suppose it does show everything I wanted it to though. And I'm sorry my voice is so drony right now. Um, I can't speak at my normal volume because everybody's starting to go to bed. And I wanted to get this up tonight. Yes. Yes, right. Um, at least I know for future treaty videos I shall need to either speed them up a hell of a lot more um, or just show some highlights of what happens after after it starts to become dry. So uh, treaty videos will actually be, be quite interesting I think, um, at least more interesting than uh, <laughs> so she goes, I need you to give me some wood, dear. And um, that made me laugh in the game. Now I can build what I need. Yes. 
ready. So now I'm pretending to build an army. Well, actually, obviously I am building one. Um, but I'm not actually going to go ahead and fight in this example, as I keep saying, but I did want to train the army. You do get a bunch of XP's from doing that, which helps you train and send um, a bunch of units. Uh, some people said it's, it's a good idea to delete your units so you get you can train mores to get the XP, but that's retarded because it gives your opponents XP. In fact, the same amount of, in fact, more XP uh, than you get for creating the units. So actually, you're doing them a favor. It's really not a good idea to delete your units, even if you want the XP. Um, as I say, you do get plenty of XP coming in once you um, start fighting. So here I'm sending advanced arsenal over the other ones because there's just so many that become available in the arsenal. Uh, you get way more upgrades than just sending individual ones. Uh, as I keep saying, you can send those individual ones once the XP's rolls in. So now I'll slow down the video for the graphs. Yeah, so now that it's over, you can have a look at my resource piles and probably work out what it would have been if I had actually had to buy a full price, um, full price spies. Um, not saying that was uh, the greatest. I'm pretty sure I could do better, and other people uh, could do better. So let's have a look at these graphs. Um, by better, I mean in terms of resource piles at the very end. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to wait for these timelines. You can pause and go back over the other graphs if you like. So here's the all unit count. Uh, more importantly, the village count. You can see them. Uh, slowly well, shoot up over the manors and then absolutely shoot up, like totally shoot up um, when I get the estates card. And these are all your resources gathered. You can see the graph, the growth um, from when I hit the industrial with the uh, the, the super um, amount of settlers that came in. Uh, this is the score. Uh, the dips are probably me having peeped the loads of expensive things in research because once you research something, obviously the resources aren't recognized on the map until the research is completed and then the score goes back up accordingly. There's the scores. Um, it reflects the fortress age and the industrial age relatively close together for myself um, and that that shows where I went straight from the fortress to the industrial so yeah hope you enjoyed the video as I say I will put the uh, build order in the description of this video if you want to read over um, what I just did here leave a like if you enjoyed the video maybe a favorite and do subscribe if you would like to see more from this channel if you're interested in joining nation of warriors then visit our website which looks something like this at www.nationofwarriors.co.uk thanks for watching see you soon for another video guys